this Saturday, Salt Lake City welcomes local artist and painter Matt Chu Odal, a Salt Lake City native, born and raised, grew up as a graffiti artist and is now migrated into doing professional artwork that you can see all around the city. Sometimes Welcome I go Matt. by just for like art shows, I'll just uh, say Matt Chu Odal because it's like my name in the middle, but mostly right. I go by Chu. So are you from, is Utah home for you? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I was born and raised here. Um, I started painting really, really young, but I started graffiti when I was 15. Mm. Uh, and that kind of got me, you know, it led to the mural, the murals and more artwork and stuff like that. Right. So this is, you, you weren't trained in art school or anything like that, Matt? Uh, no, I took a couple courses at the community college, but the teachers actually didn't really teach. They just kind of like took a break and didn't really teach anything at all. So, uh, so I quit doing that and I, yeah, I just learned off of doing, doing it. A lot of hands-on, a lot of big murals, a lot of big projects. And so, you know, the experience is what taught me. So. Right. Did you start, uh, large size format or did you start with small stuff um well growing up i'd say that i you know just did average you know s small stuff every everything is small a lot of sketching i always have been a, right. a pencil yeah. stuff like that um and then probably just because of graffiti being so big i started doing big stuff uh illegally as a kid mm. uh mm -hmm. and you know, at 15, we were up all over the city out here. You aren't, you weren't from here, but we were from a crew that was really prolific. And uh, we painted a lot of the city in about 1991 to 96, 95 area is when we were the most active and stuff like that. So who were amongst that crew, Matt? What was that? Who were amongst that crew? Um, of people that still paint today, not very many, but, mm -hmm. uh, Risk actually the the he's a DJ on U ninety two and DJ's clubs and stuff like that. He was actually one of my main bombing partners mm. um, back then, and and then he kind of went onto the DJing instead when I turned to more you know public art and murals and and stuff like that instead. So, so how did you make the journey, the transition from underground to popular art here in Salt Lake City? What was that like? Um, <clears throat> well, we were always just trying to get walls of our own to represent our style of art and our culture. Um, and from there we would meet people while we were painting and it would lead to more job, you know, more things to paint. I've also done a lot of stuff with, uh, like the Utah arts festival and the urban arts festival. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of live painting in places like that and different what? venues. Uh, and so from there it led to a lot of, uh, word of mouth, uh, uh, jobs and stuff like that people looking for murals looking for you know my my niche which is big stuff that's right. colorful and you know i focus more on portraits and things like that so mm. so I, I have a question about that um i mean i love your work uh people can find you at chu 26k is that right yeah mm -hmm. excellent um i wanted to know from the time you started in the 90s now spray has changed a lot um, and you do a lot of highly realistic work, I noticed. So I'm wondering, how has the spray can technology improved your ability to deliver realism, if at all? I mean, um, I think that you can use anything. <clears throat> I still use uh, the dollar cans from Walmart sometimes even. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you can use almost anything, but the, there is a lot of really cool things with the new uh, spray caps that have come out that are thinner. Mm -hmm. And you can use different techniques. Plus, the higher grade paint is just better to work with. Mm -hmm. um, a new thing that I actually am the most excited about is uh, it's been a few years now, but they just came out with a, a water-based paint, and I like to use that more now because in my old age of you know been using Fumi paint for so long, uh, it's really nice because this stuff's not nearly as toxic. So that's what I prefer to use now. It's not really how good the paint is. It's the fact that you don't die when you paint with it. 
So, <laughs> so, so the experience of creating a, a piece in and of itself is no longer as toxic. Yeah, exactly. So that's, and that's superb. I can't wait to see it. So how long have you been using uh, the water-based paint? Uh, probably in the last two or three years. And it's, uh, it's been a lot better to get uh, interior jobs with customers and, and stuff like that because uh, like I did a, a church, the nursery in a church. Hmm. And if I would have had to <clears throat> use real spray paint, they would have had to shut down and do all this stuff. And, and I was able to just paint in the room and it, and it, it actually kind of smells sweet. It's not, uh, hmm. Hmm. it's not so, you know, toxic and stuff like that. So hmm. it, how does it compare so, longevity wise? So, <clears throat> um, the water base won't last as long as the, the, uh, outdoor stuff like the hardcore actually the mural that you're in front of now is uh is done with the hardcore montana paint hmm. and that's the stuff that will it won't even fade for like usually like 10 years depending wow. on the so. Hmm. so how would you characterize your style which in my mind is, is is quite dynamic uh today i would say yeah these five minutes in this five minutes right yeah yeah, in this five minutes, I would say that it's my styles. Uh, I have a lot of portrait background, but I'm a basically a retired graffiti artist, so I also like lettering and that mm. type of stuff. Uh, and I, I kind of like to add like a little bit of a psychedelic twist. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but I just enjoy doing like the abstract lettering with the color and that, you know, and that type of thing. And and I love to paint big. So big, right. Why is that? Um, it's, it's big, bigger is always better. Right. It's, it's right. true. You know, I mean, a, a canvas this big, I don't even know what I would sell that for. Right. If it's right. huge on a wall, it just the values there, everybody sees it. It's for the public. Mm. Um, it's, you know, that type of thing. So, oh. so when, when you, I understand that you like to work early in the morning. Is that just simply, it's it's easier there are fewer people it's it, you can get more done when especially in the hot weather um <clears throat> i just think in general with all work it's better to do things in the morning you get like double the amount of stuff done i think um and just morning energy is the best time to create right i would agree i would agree i feel that way not that i'm you know i i'm creatively inclined let's say matt but you know not at your level um, cool so much respect for the artistry that I see in your work. I, I really have a great amount of respect. It's beautiful. Thank mm. you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's exciting to see. So what, you like things that are big. Would you say that that's probably the thing that you enjoy most about this form of expression? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just like painting big. And then, I mean, I like that it's in the public side. Uh, I don't even feel like a gallery gets as good a play as like something I have on state street that I painted, you know, that type of thing. Right. Um, kind of like in a way, a way, a way to get your stuff out there. And, uh, uh, another thing is I really like the feedback from the people that like, you meet a lot of people right on the street when you're painting it. And it's almost better to hear what they have to say than anybody else, you know, just because they're the people that actually, that's their mural. They're, they're the people from that area, you know? And so it's, that's always been cool. I've always fed off of that. So. What a great way to learn what works. I mean, cause you're obviously an artist for the people it seems um, and vice versa, right? You, you gain a lot of your artistic, um, I guess, momentum from feedback in the community. It sounds like. Yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, that's really cool it's the most exciting thing about it i think is just being able to paint you know big for the public like that and get that feedback so that brings me to another question that i'm sure many uh, up-and-coming artists are curious to find out and you've probably heard this question a lot but i would personally like to know how is it that you find uh sacred spaces to work in uh, do you have access to a media company or how do you come by those spaces a, a lot of, uh, a lot of legwork. I don't know. <clears throat> um, sometimes it's just, a, I may know the owner of a building or somebody may just contact me like through Instagram or, or meet me on the street and say, Hey, I've got a business that needs to be painted. Hmm. Um, so it just varies. It does vary a lot, but it's, it's, 
you know, it's like anything. A lot of it is kind of word of mouth and stuff like that. And I'd say Instagram and, and social media has helped with other big murals and, and things awesome. like that, too. Yeah. And speaking of tech, uh, how do you feel about other artists that uh, use the digital tools to create artwork? Do you find that it's too perfect at times? Uh, yeah, I, um, but I don't want to say I don't like it because I've seen some amazing stuff. Even some of my peers have done recently on, on iPads and different stuff like that. And mm. I've tried it a little bit. I'm, I'm horrible at tech, anything. Mm. I'm, I'm a hands-on guy that splatters paint and, you know what I mean, and does my thing. I, I don't really like any computers or, or phones or any of that stuff at all. And so it's hard for me to have the patience to, to do a full piece of artwork. Oh, here's my cat. Hey, hey cat, uh, what's up? A full piece of artwork, though, on a on uh, iPad. I just can't. To me, it's just boring. Uh, but I ha I respect that art, and I've seen some really awesome stuff. Especially a lot of graffiti artists have been doing some really cool stuff on them. Mm. Um, but it's just not for me. So. Speaking of other artists and other art that may or may not inspire you. Um, where do you find inspiration? I hope that's not too simple a question, but I'm curious. Um, I find a lot of inspiration in my family. Uh, just recently, we moved into a new home that has a, a detached garage that we've converted to a studio. Cool. Uh, and basically, out of the six of us, five of us paint in here. Uh, I have a four-year-old, I have a six-year-old, I have a 15-year-old, and a 17-year-old. The 17-year-old doesn't care about painting, but she's more into fashion. Oh. And my wife paints with me, too. She helps. She's like my partner on all my murals. She doesn't necessarily do the actual painting, but she helps me get the jobs, helps me with the bids, uh, that type of thing. And from there, it's actually made her an artist now, too. And that's probably my biggest inspiration is, is all my, all my girls. I got four girls, you know, and, and, and my wife. So those, those are the people that inspire me the most. I like to teach, you know, and that, that type of thing. So are you holding any classes uh, online for people at this point? Um, no, I've never really done that. I've done, <clears throat> I've like done some work with uh, kids and then some like live hands on painting and things like that. Uh, I work with uh, the Hip Hop uh, Education Resource Center with the Herc. It's right down the street from from where you're at. Uh, and I also worked with a nonprofit group with uh, for East High School too. And and they and some of the kids actually came and hands on helped me paint. Uh, and so I did get to teach them, and it was it's kind of cool. It's hard to teach people when it's their first time picking up the can. Mm. Um, mm. But I did have an opportunity actually to to teach uh, some of the soccer players for RSL uh, and they helped me paint a little project I did with them too. Uh, so I don't know. I do like that. It's kind of cool to like be involved with the community and, and the kids, you know, help having them learn how to do it and maybe plant a seed for other art for them in the future. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you see your children developing as artists, what excites you most about what you're seeing? Um, I just think it's really cool. I've, I've heard something recently about how the next generation is going to be way more into art. Um, and I'm seeing it in my own children. I, I would agree, you know, and, and just, Seeing them develop, uh, like this was my this is my six year old's painting. Oh wow! Wow, I mean, that's like a me, depth kind of like going on there. Lesson, if if that makes sense, it was hmm. kind of like I I kind of like showed her what to do, but didn't she just did this? You know? Wow. Um, that feels good. I don't I don't know. There the, there's a visual. Uh, thing that inspires me <laughs> it's hard to put that to words you know no it feels good looking at it i mean obviously you you've got the gift for visual literacy uh that's phenomenal yeah let's see here so uh we got that we got inspiration so i'm wondering you know your work uh it, it may or may does it frequently require touch-up matt 
Um, actually, I just, I rarely will touch something up. Some of the time uh, we'll use that as an excuse to repaint it due to the lack of walls in, in Salt Lake. Mm. Uh, but I did touch up my mural in Sunnyvale Park recently. I, I, uh, what I did is a, a small windscreen for RSL. Mm -hmm. and, and then I took my proceeds that I earned from that and repaired a mural that I had done in 2016 uh, that was just kind of getting rusty and stuff like that in a few places and chipped off. Yeah. Um, and then if something does get written on or anything like that, I'll go and restore it or touch it up. But usually the paint holds up at least 10 years. Uh, and it, it will last longer if you put like a clear coat over it too. Mm -hmm. But you know, after about 10 years, a lot of people are like, let's maybe do something new, you know? So that's right. going to happen. So. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the street art I've seen in Amsterdam. Really fabulous, you know, very diverse. Um, so let me ask you this, Matt. Are there any, when you're working in a public space, are there any unspoken rules about what you do and how you do it? Um, unspoken rules. Yeah. Things that you know to do or not to do when you're you're in a new space, as rare as that must be, um, are there uh, any unspoken rules as an artist must live? You have to ask permission to paint the wall if you don't want to get. In. <laughs> There's a good one. My my wife said that just now. Excellent, yeah. excellent. That's All that's right. a good one. Um, but also, no, I mean, just okay. Even being from Salt Lake in this setting. You really need to uh, respect that you could offend people, if that's a, if that makes sense. I don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, so I have a story, actually, a real quick one. Um, and I painted in a lot of murals in Rock Springs, Wyoming, as well. I've, I've just ran into several, several murals out there. And uh, I painted a mural for a golf shop, and they wanted me to depict the satire making fun of Wyoming because they're known for raping sheep. So, so they had me actually paint some sheep and a cowboy looking with googly eyes with hearts coming out at a sheep who had his, his butt showing, okay? Hmm. Um, now, I made the front page of the newspaper there, but it was offensive to them, and eventually it was taken down. Hmm. Uh, now, this wasn't my choice. This was the owner, the person, you know, the, the client hmm. paid me to do this, but I was younger. This was years ago. And I wasn't as experienced, and I just thought, oh, cool, this will, you know, I made the front page, but the mural still got taken down. So mm. if that makes sense, you know, you got to go. I don't want to censor my shit, but I, at the same time, I'm not, I'm not, I, I love women. I'm not going to paint nudity on the wall. I'm not going to paint guns on the wall. I'm mm. not going to paint a sheep's asshole on the wall again. I mean, I, I learned that lesson the hard way. <laughs> I'm not, well, it, you know, so I do have rules. So it's funny that you would say that, but the rules are hard to put to those kind of words because it sounds so silly. So it's kind of obvious. You want to paint, I don't want to paint something indecent in a public setting. I don't feel like that's a respectful thing to do, mm. uh, if that makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. What do you tell uh, people that come to you for advice, artists? What's one of the things that you often share? Um, I tell people to draw more. Uh, I, even the newest artist or even an older friend that does it, you know, colleague. Um, I always say, you know, sketch it out first. Like, plan, you know, try to plan it out. I don't necessarily follow that myself all the time. And there is something about painting on the, on the, on the fly, you know, and freestyling stuff. You know, that's, that's really awesome. It has a different energy. But at the same time, it's kind of nice to plan. And at my older age, I do try to teach people that, you know, and just that'd be one word of advice is mm -hmm. try to plan it out as much as you can. So, yeah. In my experience, my brief uh, experience with graphic design, that's exactly, I, I kind of have to live by the garbage in, garbage out approach. It seems yeah. to be effective. Um, yeah. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. How about this? So do you adapt to your ideas to a given space, like you just mentioned beforehand, in mapping it out? Or are your designs, um, you know, are they set? And, and how often do you get to do the free flow uh, painting? 
Um, well, pretty much <clears throat> the space does dictate what I paint. Um, I want to, I, I always try to customize it to wh wherever, you know, and there, like, for example, behind you, there's the, the grate showing on that part of the wall and you just mm. kind of have to, you know, you run into these obstacles and you almost want to include those into the painting uh, and just paint right over it, you know, and that's kind of, that's kind of part of it, like, uh, is, it does definitely affect the art though, uh, whatever, whatever surface it might be, whatever shape of the wall or whatever it is that you paint, so. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would imagine, actually, it's one of my favorite things is the tactile nature when you get close to a very large painting that's on a wall, you know, the wall kind of speaks a story through the art and, and they kind of both share the story, if that's not too lame to say. Um, yeah. hmm. So here's a question, Matt, are all of your pieces related, would you say? Or have they been become so diverse uh, recently that they're all separate and individual pieces. Um, I do something where, I'll, and I've learned this from other artists growing up and stuff, uh, where I will try to carry on things into other paintings that I, you know, like an element or like like how there's a lot of eyes on the painting that you're that you're at now. Uh, you know, maybe I'll do that same kind of eye somewhere else, or you'll just see a certain style. Um, it's a way to, to, I don't know, just to kind of like coin my style in a sense. You know, you can see a little bit of like similar colors uh, that I'll use. But but yeah, every painting is individual and different. Uh, when I do my letters, when we do our traditional graffiti productions, is what we call them, hmm. um, then those will all have a, a lot of very similar elements. Uh, if you look through my Instagram, you can see like a lot of the shoe pieces that I do. Um, they are similar, but every single one is completely different as well. If you if you look at it, you know. So, so would you say when you do those sort of pieces, are you painting from a, a feeling standpoint, or does it come from your brain more? Um, I'd say both. It's kind of like uh, it's especially doing the actual pieces, the lettering pieces. That to me, that's a it's almost a physical meditation, like Tai Chi or something like that. Mm -hmm. where, where it's part of the process and there's these certain ways that you paint things you know you fill it all in and then you do these certain things and then you come in and outline it and you carve it all in um, and and that's like a really big thing that helps me uh decompress it helps that, that's my therapy you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's it's the it makes me think it helps me it helps me work stuff out it's and that's why i do so many i mean mm -hmm. even what's on instagram is a portion of what i paint uh, mm -hmm. and I, it's, uh, I paint a lot. I, I paint a lot. So. Well, thank goodness for that. You know, the world needs good <laughs> art. Does it not? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, so would you say that's the fundamental difference between, we'll call it, uh, street art and graffiti that uh, the graffiti is, is simply the stylistic lettering where street art could be a multitude of different things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, graffiti art <clears throat> comes from a uh, a separate culture. It's not even it's not even the same thing as street art. And graffiti artists, you might get punched in the face if you call a graffiti artist a street artist. Uh, that's not that's not what we are. Uh, it's it's more <clears throat> a street artist is more like a stencil artist or somebody that got some murals in the street kind of thing. Um, and everybody's opinion here is going to be different than mine, maybe. But <clears throat> a graffiti artist is is almost like a folk art. It's something uh, that's been passed on um, since the late 70s, clear till now. And there's things that we all do the same from that time period till now. There's things I started in 1991. There's things that I still do the same Such that as? I did yeah, and that's part of the tradition, part of the repetition of it. Uh, it's it's the way to kind of embrace our culture. And so that's why I'll always do the wild style, which is what we call our lettering. Um, and I'll always do these traditional characters next to it and kind of like hip-hop characters. It's I wouldn't say graffiti art is 
hip hop, but it's definitely very related and and relative to it. So, so do you listen to hip hop while you're painting? Um, I'm a weirdo. I don't listen to music. I'll, when I paint with friends, I I listen to music, uh, and I love hip hop. I I I love hip hop, but I'm a big '90s fan, of course, uh, right. being an older dude and. That's been a major influence on on art and on graffiti art for me, for sure. But I like it quiet when I paint. I'm kind of a weird guy like that. Hmm. I, <laughs> that's I why I like to be said for solitude, right? Yeah, yeah. Helps you focus sometimes. Yeah, I find when I'm doing creative, you know, I'll start listening to music, but when I as I get more focused, I'll, I'll find myself turning the music off. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Well, Chude, anything you would want to say to other up-and-comers out there uh, before we close uh, with a big thank you from the green scene here? Um, who also would like to know, I mean, uh, as a friend of cannabis, how does cannabis factor into your creative process? Um, it, it's definitely a big factor in my creative process. Mm -hmm. It uh, helps me uh, with creativity, helps me relax into it and focus as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say it's actually a, a really big part of it. And it's, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't want to say that, you know, Oh, weeds, my inspiration. That's not necessarily what it is, but it, it's definitely a big part of it. And I use that shit to wake up. I use that shit to go to sleep. That's how it is. You know? So. Mm -hmm. Wow. So one final question, if we may, Matt, um, how do you want to be remembered as, as a Salt Lake artist? Um, I just I want to be remembered for doing big murals everywhere and having an abundance like even telling you that list I gave you yesterday um, it's hard for me to remember that because I'm, I'm not a bragger but it is it's kind of cool to say that I have dozens of murals in my city in my hometown and I have murals in other places as well um, and that's kind of my legacy, you know, anything I can leave behind and inspire, you know, the younger generation and show them how devoted I was to it. Uh, and, you know, hopefully plant that seed with them and then they continue to like, you know, pick up the ball from there and, and advance it further. So. So awesome. So your current project is. Um, right now I'm working on the third cutthroat barbershop location. It's in Sandy. Um, <clears throat> and we've had some permit issues on the build because of, uh, kind of cause of COVID shit going on. So, uh, so I've been trying to paint this thing for about three months. Um, and I think that they'll be ready for us. Uh, we already have started, but we have to go back. And I think I'm going to work on that starting after this weekend or this weekend. Um, and that's the main project I have right now. I'm also looking at uh, redoing the Acapulco market in Glendale uh, because recently it got defaced. Somebody went and just tagged on it or something. So, so I'll be doing that shortly. Um, and I do have a few other things lined up with other park uh, projects to help with the food, the football courts that they build, the soccer courts. Oh, that'll uh, the, be fun. The, going around and putting in all the parks right now. So I might be working with those guys again on some of those that they're doing. So awesome. that's just something that's going on right now. I also have a, a gallery that I work with in Park City called Provocateur Gallery. And just recently they found me and uh, it's artsy.net. That's how you can look at the stuff that they have available for sale. Um, it's a pretty high end gallery. It's actually, it's uh, been really cool working with the owners. His name's Jake Arnold. Um, and I've got, I think I have six or six to 10 pieces circulating through his online store. And then he's redoing a new gallery uh, in Park City. Um, that'll be more on the main street. I think he had another one, but it was, uh, but he's moving into a different location right now. So, so that's kind of been a new event of mine is, is getting into the gallery scene a little bit. So how does that feel? Weird. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, congratulations. So that sounds like a move upward, man. That, that sounds awesome. 
Yeah, it is. It's hard for me to put my art onto canvas. And so that's kind of been the weird part is what I mean by that, you know, but it's mm -hmm. been, it's been fun. And I've done, uh, actually since everybody's spent more time at home in the last few months, you know, worldwide, um, I've also done that a lot and I've had my team, my family, and we've produced, I mean, tons of canvases lately just because of that. So, so I do have a lot of new work. I, I'll probably be doing a show uh, shortly at the Looking Gas, Glass Gallery. Super. Um, Can't wait to see that. And then they'll always have new works at this uh, provocative gallery, uh, uh, artsy.net. So, um, and then, you know, from there, got to, you know, always grinding and trying to create more paintings. And it's been, it's been pretty cool. So. Well, it's been a great pleasure meeting you, Matt. Thank you so much, True 26 k for spending time with uh, Salt Lake City this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Nice to do the interview. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, it's been a pleasure.